Hey everybody, welcome back. We are live. It is April 3rd, 2024. And uh, you're here with uh, with me and with Red. And we're going to be talking about the Chicago Outfit. And what we're going to be talking about is the current news uh, of the Chicago Outfit. Which, um, well, we'll see what the current news is. Because it's breaking. So welcome back, guys. It's Mob Vlog. Hey everybody, grab a coffee and cannoli. It's time for Mob Vlog with my friend Adam Flowers and Red Wamet. Hey there, Red. How are you doing today? I am doing very good fantastic so big tune is in the show uh alan b slushy mess in chicago that sounds like crew tim peroni larry c david grimpy keith helton john ramsey robert murphy hey welcome in guys dave m kevin rather everybody is here tony johnson jim yeager and uh and uh sonny zaro hey guys you're having a Windy City Beef right now? Man, I gotta, you know, I'm going to make a video about Windy City Beef. I'm going to go over there and have one, as if I need one. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what you need. It's what you want. <laughs> it's almost swimming season. It's almost swimming season. So, uh, Chuck Ellerston, Ellert, Ellertson, sorry, Ellertson, Sean Pender, good evening. Hello from the Heights, Chicago Heights in the house. John Wallace from Albuquerque. Guys, welcome in. Benjamin, it's nice to see you. Kundari. Um, welcome in, guys. Hit the like button if you're just coming in. If you're new here, uh, hit the subscribe button. And uh, we're, we have fun here on the show. Uh, we talk about the Chicago mob and various other things. Could be talking about the CIA corruption. Could talk about the fake moon landing. Who knows? Red, are you uh, you're chipper today, aren't you? Oh, always. I'm looking at you. Yeah, you. Peroni here. He says his wife's birthday is today. Oh my gosh, Tim Peroni, uh, Valerie Peroni, happy birthday! Wow, happy birthday! You know, um, great people share birthdays on April third. <laughs> we do. <laughs> it's it's Red's birthday today too. So happy birthday, Valerie! Happy birthday, Red! Isn't that wild? Tim's wife's same birthday as Red's birthday. What are the chances of that happening? I know. There were nine of them on Facebook this morning. There were what? Nine of them. I was looking at them. You're a popular guy, Red. You're a popular guy. It was a popular day, a popular moment. That's why they call you handsome. You had to be on last week's show to get that joke. That's a throwback. So, anyway. (laughs) Oh, yes. Um, so, uh, Tim Peroni said there's not enough time in the field to talk about all the CIA corruption. I think you were correct. Timothy Foster. Hello, Ed Jones. Welcome in. Happy birthday, Red. Um, it's Red's birthday today. What, what the hell? Happy birthday, Red. Thank no you. Chris, three, two, eight, like everybody. It was my birthday last week, but we weren't live on my birthday. So, you know, I just got all the Facebook ones. Alan Beast's party on Red. <laughs> Party long, Red. Yeah. Okay. okay, you guys ever hear of a Chicago landlord, Lou Wolf? I yeah. yes, I Amphitheater. knew Louis. I knew Louis Wolf. Amphitheater in yeah. a lot of Vegas property too. He did. Uh, he was uh, actually he was a big gambler, and Jimmy Cozo uh, owed his notes. He owned his notes, and he had a couple nightclubs. And Jimmy called me up one day and says. Uh, this place is down like in Piper's Alley or someplace. Or maybe it was, I forget where it was. It used to be called the Paradise Lounge. And it was like 15 different bars in there. Big joint. And Jimmy says, you want it? Go take a look at it. So I go to look at it. And when I go to look at it, uh, Louis there. And he owned a lot of real estate in Chicago. A lot. But he turned around. He lost the place. And Jimmy says, it's yours. You can have it for free. Just, you know, give us a take, a cut of it. But you could go in there and take over tomorrow. And I looked at it, it was too much to take. It really was. Yeah. It was a big operation, huh. major operation. I'd had to hire 100, 100 people at least to run it. So, uh, so Robert, I uh, hope that answers your question there. Red seems like he knows that it damned everybody at some point and somewhere in time, all the way back to Abe Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to shave his father. <laughs> Why were you drinking beer in the fucking place across the way from the theater? You're supposed to be on duty that day, Brad. You know? <laughs> Come on, man. 
Lloyd <laughs> B. Ryan, 2018, convicted felon. Yeah, he was a slumlord. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Irving Brownstone. Irving Brownstone. Uh, hey, Red and uh, Adam, uh, shout out from Kansas City, Missouri. I say Missouri. That's what they say down there. Anyways, my guy Gary Jenkins back on. Uh, get my guy Gary Jenkins back on and have him talk about Vinny Piscata, a member of the Kansas City that you ask out my mom, LOL. I heard wow. it Piscata. I did. Have you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Gary's fun. He's he's a wealth of knowledge, man. That guy is just he's incredible. Oh, uh, yeah. he's, he is. It's like red, man. This guy's got so many. Yeah, I don't know. They, he read so many wiretaps. You know, it's Gary you know, was the first listen, guy. To, listen to so many as well. I mean, not just red, but listen to him. Gary was the first guy to. Well, he he sued for him. He went and sued for the wiretaps. Get a hold. Gary was the first guy to ever put me on a podcast. And it wasn't, a visual. yeah, it wasn't a visual. It was just a voice thing where I called right. on the cell phone. Yeah. Yeah. Very, yeah, very good. He was doing that. When I first moved to Vegas back in 06, he was doing it. Uh, Denny Griffin, he used to have Denny on a lot. And uh, and Denny was involved with the mob tour. And so, yeah, that's how, yeah. Anyway, nice guy, Gary. He's got a lot of information. The old ice house with Aaron. <laughs> And Pastor Man, a fabulous uh, memory. If you guys haven't gone to check out the Gangland Wire podcast, do that. It's uh, good. So, Timothy Foster, you brought it up. Somebody finally brought it up. Look, the Tropicana. Yes, it's going to be blown up. This is one of the last mob uh, casinos, mob-oriented. Joe Augusto at the uh, uh, Kansas City running the show there and having the skim come out of there. Um, it's gonna it's gonna suck to see that place gone. They got this beautiful Tiffany ceiling. At least they're gonna take that down and preserve it somewhere. And I'm sure some of the things will end up in museums at the Mob Museum and at the um, the other museums around town as well, the Heritage Museum and whatnot. So we'll get What's left the flamingo. The flamingo, man. The last part of the original was torn down in '94, so wow. '93 or '94 it was torn down. So. Um, yeah, the Tropicana. I mean, Circus Circus. You still got Circus Circus standing there from the '60s. Oh, so, yeah. but the Tropicana. They're going to see it. It's a. It's a. You know, to see that kind of, especially being into history and being a history buff, I hate seeing oh, yeah. stuff. The there. Fremont's still around. Well, the Fremont's still there. Yeah, that's still that's still there. Along with some of the buildings there, they tore down some of the originals, but the Golden Gate. I mean that's our I think that's our oldest standing so but when you get to mob stuff it seems like the Tropicana was just you know the rat pack it was you know when did the silver slipper close Adam silver slipper yeah no but they got it spinning on the sign downtown I think they put it up somewhere in the art district yeah um I think so I helped build the mob experience at the Tropicana Tommy Bridges, you worked for Jay Bloom over there. That's how I met Jay, and then he—that's uh, how I ended up meeting Millicent Siegel was through him, and, and that was that was pretty cool, man. Um, the mob experience, so I never got to go through it. Never did. I don't know. I got the the magic and everything. I kind of took off, and I was busy, and I just never. And it was only open for a, a short time there, but I understand it had holograms, and it was really immersive. So um, never got to see it though. I wish I did. Really did. Yeah. I heard he was going to try and open it back up at uh, Alcatraz at one point in time. The mob experience, that whole thing was going to be on this. It's it's the largest collection. I think he has more stuff than the museum does. Honest to God, it's a it's a big uh, big thing. My mom said happy birthday, Red. Thank you, thank you, Mrs. Flowers. God bless you. Um, we're gonna have steak tonight, so that's gonna be nice. A Tim Peroni. I was told recently that I got the name Marty Fenster uh, was the shooter that killed Bugsy Siegel, according to Chauncey Holt's daughter. Tim, no idea. You know what I'm going with? I'm going with Virginia Hill's brother. I'm going with it was Virginia Hill's brother. It just, it's too, I, yeah. It was strange. It was in the basement to the right side. That's what I understand, man. I never got to go see it though, Tommy. I thought it would have been really. Um, I, I should have. I should have taken the, the time to go and, and do that. Yeah. Anyway, it's like seeing the uh, the the Titanic exhibit. You and I still haven't done that either, Red. And I live here in town. Yeah. 
Yeah. When you live in a place that's tourist, you tend not to do the tourist stuff. I stay away from the strip if I can. You don't, you don't go to the play unless you have guests come in for town, then you show them around. Right. Uh, Julie M., it didn't even have to close it yet. It'll be a year before they do anything with the property. Why couldn't they keep it open one more day for the Trop's birthday? I know. It would have been one more day. It would have been the, was it 67th or something? It was a, like, something like that. Yeah. Anyway, that's uh, yes, crazy. Crazy. Going to be gone. Shame time. Nothing is, nothing's historic in this town. Nothing is sacred. Oh, no, there is. There's one thing in this town that's sacred. The historic Fifth Street School. <laughs> it's a one-story school building that was built. It's downtown. It's right off of Fifth Street. Imagine that. <laughs> Between Fourth and Fifth. The historic Fifth Street School. The land that that school sits on is was owned originally by the Union Pacific Railway when they came through town back in the early 1900s. They owned it. And they gave it to the city with a stipulation that as long as there's a school on the land... The city could have it. But if they ever get rid of the school, the Union Pacific Railway owns the land again. So that school is never going to get torn down. They don't use it. They use it for events and whatnot. I don't I don't think it's an operating school still. But uh, that's where Oscar Goodman put his statue of him with the martini glass in front of the elementary school. Gotcha. Go figure, right? Same guy who stood and said, ah, my favorite uh, hobbies are drinking gin martinis, Bombay Sapphire. They paid him to say that over and over and over. So now there's a statue of him with his martini glass in front of the elementary school. You can't make this shit up. Honestly, only in Vegas could something like that happen. So what about the church? Uh, Thomas, what about the what? The church. That's all. Which church? The Guardian Angel Cathedral on the Strip? Yeah, that's a, that's got the casino chips and the stained glass. If you guys want to go visit Vegas and see the sights, you got to go to the Guardian Angel Cathedral. <laughs> While you're there, you got to go on the mob tour. <laughs> we'll do that too. Yeah, we'll do that. Do that. Uh, can't find the like button on your podcast. If you're watching on a device, turn your device sideways, swipe up, and you'll see the like button. <laughs> um, or if you have auto rotate on, if you have it in stuck in portrait mode, it won't. Then you got to. Yeah. Anyway, it should work. Uh, Scott, I saw that on the tour. Yeah, we used to go buy it on the tour. Changed it up a little bit since then, Scott. Uh, my honeymoon, we stayed at the R Riviera Hotel. They were filming the movie that I later found out was Casino. William Davidson, you were there in 94 when they were filming. You didn't even know it was the movie Casino, huh? That's yeah. it. You remember the part where De Niro's sitting out by the pool talking to Andy Stone, and he's telling him, if we're going to run it this way, and Andy's in a white robe, it says Riviera on the robe. <laughs> Uh, Jay Dre. Uh, good evening, gents from Scotland. Oh, you guys, oh damn, you got to be eight or nine hours ahead of us, right? Scotland, isn't that about eight or nine? Or so? Yeah, it's almost, uh, you know, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock over there. Uh, good for you, Jay. Welcome into the show. Uh, I'm glad that you made it live. Could Oscar put a statue of himself by the church? If he could, he would. All right. <laughs> That's my feelings on it. Why not? You know that when he was he elected he was elected mayor, he went down to the permit office in town. Any movies, anything that wants to film, send them straight up to my office. And he'd ask for part in the thing. Yeah, I'm serious, man. It's it's just it's Oscar, man. I liked him as mayor. It, he, there was a they were vandalizing, you know, with the spray paint when I first moved here it was a big problem. They were going into the gated communities and tagging people's cars and houses and Oh, they had to lock all the spray paint up in the in the, the Home Depot and put a, you know, great, great. It's all locked up. Do you know what Oscar, you know what Oscar suggested in a in a in a in a open city meeting? Do you know what he suggested? Oscar Goodman said, "Let's cut off. Let's get a couple of the guys that will cut their thumbs off. You know what? <laughs> they can't hold a can of spray paint. They'll be running around town going, I wouldn't do that if I were you. I like Oscar. I honest to God." All right, Second City Firearms. Red, thank you for the book. Just got it yesterday. Can't wait to start reading. Get Red's book, guys. If you haven't, go to red.com and uh, pick up pick up his book. Um, yes, so good uh, good read. It's, it's a lot of fun. Or you can listen to me read it to Red on his channel if you want. Alan B., hard to believe 1994 was 30 years ago. It's God. Not, it's God. Not, man. <laughs> Why do you have to say it like that, man? Holy shit. I was about to graduate high school. 
just about to. I was was young, was full of inspiration, dreams. I was going places. Here I am. <laughs> you went. At least you went to a place you did something. I had fun. This has been fun so uh, so far. I've, I've enjoyed it. Just think, if you'd have stayed in uh, Calumet City, you'd be okay. what do you do? You'd be playing video games. What would I be doing? Well, that's what I do in Vegas. <laughs> Play video games in Calumet City or Las Vegas. Either or, it's fine. Oh, man. 30 years ago, I think 1970. Yeah, I know, right? I wasn't even alive then, but that's what it feels like to me. <laughs> feels 1970 like was a good year. It was a very good year. <laughs> what was? Me. 1970, yeah. Why was 70 a good year for you? Oh, I just had so much going at that time. It yeah. was... It was um, I was through with the Marine Corps. I was doing my bit with the outfit. 71, I became an informant. Wow. So there was a lot happening right then. That's that's true. Yeah. When I was 18, I was full of dreams and inspiration and alcohol. Partying. <laughs> it. Dreams, inspiration, and alcohol. There you go. <laughs> Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hello, Joseph. How are you? John O. Oh, nice to have you guys. Did you guys know the recent juice loan beatdown case that got dropped? Funny you brought that up, John. How, how did you brought that up? We were gonna, we were gonna talk about that actually, and um, and I'm yeah, gonna, I'm and, gonna laugh to this. The red read the article. I didn't. I was busy. I was busy, so I didn't read it. Then red read it. Oh, did you hear that? Red read it. Red read it. Red, yeah, I say that fast. Red, 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 red. Hey, it sounds like Reddit. You know the red whoops. All right, so so Red looked it over, and I was taken back by the gentleness of Gino. Gino, who's Gino? Gene. He was the man that was on trial. Ah, okay. He was on trial in 2016, or he yeah. he was he actually loaned the guy ten thousand dollars. In 2016, and 10, after him, yeah, ten thousand, and after he loaned him ten thousand dollars, he still owed the ten thousand dollars in 2023. Oh, wait, 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 wait! He borrowed ten thousand dollars, and then how many years went by? Six, eight, and he still owes the ten thousand dollars. Yeah, the, 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 I don't want to be in that business. I give you the money, I collect it, and you still owe it. <laughs> How are you getting that? The interest must have been a killer. <laughs> I would imagine so. Yeah, I would imagine so. I mean, come on. It's you know what kills me about it more than anything? They threaten this guy's life or somebody that knows him, associated. They live out in Anderson, Illinois. Both. Yeah. Okay. Uh, both defendants. They actually, now because they went on trial, they probably spent twenty five, thirty five, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 on attorneys going into federal court over a $10,000 oh, debt. And so I say to myself, Man, these people are really sharp. <laughs> and they say their outfit. Who do they report up to? Oh, well, you know, I mean, there's guys connected to guys, you know, right? I'm the mayor of this township, and your nephew has a paving company, and I'll give him the contract to do our roads. And at Christmas, I want that boat. That's going to happen. It's gone on since the beginning of time. Their outfit. Gone on since the beginning of time. Shit. Hey. Hold on. Okay. Phone call, man. Who's calling in here? Uh, hello, Mob Vlog. This is uh, Adam and Red. You're uh, on air. What's your name? Yeah, my name is uh, Giovanni Rossi. Uh, Giovanni Rossi. Hello. Welcome into the show, Giovanni. What can we uh, do for you uh, today? On. I'm calling to find out if a carmine is there. Uh, no, <laughs> left. Carmine left, right, Red? He's gone. Yeah. Where is yeah. a Carmine if he know there? Uh, he's not here, man. I don't keep tabs on him. Like I said, he, he left. Where did he a fucking go? I, dude, I don't know, man. What is such a shit? I have no idea. Dude. I have no clue about, uh, about Carmine. You don't know Red, do you? I don't know. Sorry, Giovanni. We don't know. Left Sorry. where? He's gone. Then, uh, where is he uh, now? I don't know. No idea. Listen, uh, how well uh, do you uh, know a Carmine? He comes and goes, right? I mean, we see him here and there. Um, you know, just, uh, 
You know, here and there. I don't know. Let me ask you a question. Sure, man. What's up? Is a car mine related to you because he owes me five large? No, man. <laughs> not related to me at all, dude. <laughs> not at all. No. He lost no. a five a large in a poker game last weekend, and he said to me he would have all my monies by this a Friday, and that was last a Friday. Uh, it sounds like Carmine, Red. <laughs> that sounds like Carmine. Good luck getting your money, man. No idea. You have a, have a good day, though, okay? I have a good uh, idea. Maybe you what? could uh, pay me, and then he could uh, pay A you back later, and that way everybody be happy. <laughs> no, it sounds like a good idea, but no thanks. No thanks. You have a good day. Good day. Thanks. Wait, wait one second. I tell you all a joke before I hang up the telephone. Oh, no. Okay. Hey. Sure. Yeah, dude, tell us a joke. What is a mobster's favorite game to play? Favorite game to play? Mobster's favorite game to play? What is it? I don't know. Red? I have no idea. What? Whack a mole. <laughs> I hate whack a mole. <laughs> That's for you, Red. I think that's for you. Thanks, Giovanni. Uh, you have a good day. Happy birthday, Red Wemete. You have a good day now. Hi, Jan. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That's Giovanni. You have a good day, Giovanni. Thanks for calling. <laughs> so you guys want to know, I mean, Red and I sit around and talk on the phone and go, you know, it'd be funny. You know, it'd be that, that. Carmine left to Giovanni Russo. <laughs> Giovanni Russo. Keith Helton. There's Rossi. Giovanni Rossi. Yeah. It's Kevin Morrison's looking for Mike Hunt. Anyway, all right. So, <laughs> if, if you find it, if you find it, Kevin, let me know. <laughs> yeah, if you do, let Red know. He's always looking for it. So, <laughs> anyway, so uh, so basically, they lent this guy money, and then they collected on it, and then they, and then they what happened? It got thrown out or something, right? They didn't collect on it. They collected the juice money since 2016 till, I don't know, it was 2017 or 18 or 19, something like that, or 2023 or 20, that this other guy who's mentioned in the article beats him. He goes over and tries to get the money out. Of him. So uh, the government indicted both of them, but the judge is a real pinhead, and she turned around and said, if anybody mentions organized crime in this case, it's out of here. I mean, there was a pretrial motion. So the prosecution clearly needs some work on this. <laughs> they put an FBI agent on the stand and they ask him, what unit do you work for? And he says, oh, I work in organized crime. <laughs> mistrial. <laughs> Unbelievable. Friday. Friday was a mistrial. Yes, it gets thrown out. Friday, it was a mistrial. Wow. Well, looky there. Wow. Your own self in the foot. Huh? Talk about it. Jeez. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's, you know, I, Alan B. Uh, I know who Adam's talking about with the paving in the township. LOL. I won't name names either. Yeah, I was just making that up. I was giving that as an example. I have no idea about anybody being the mayor or something and having a nephew with it. I don't know anything about that. I'm being honest. I just made that. I, I actually say that on the tour part of the script. So <laughs> I, just, I I don't know. I don't know anything. You understand, Red? I don't know, I know nothing. I know nothing at all. <laughs> nothing. Welcome into the show, guys. If you're new here, hit the like, hit the subscribe button. Uh, we're live every uh, Wednesday, 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, 4 p.m. Central time. So if you're watching and we're live now, uh, you're on live. You guys can comment and uh, you guys can. Uh, that's what, I mean, that's what the show is, really. We put up it's the current breaking outfit news, which there really isn't any. <laughs> I mean, it's no really breaking current outfit. It's the first outfit trial we've had in how many years? Is it really? Yeah. 20 some years almost, right? Almost 20 years, 18 years? Over 20 years. No, no. 06, 07 was Family Secrets. Makes it 17. Yeah, it's not 27. Now. 18, 18 years. Yeah. It's still, it's almost two decades, man, you know, since anything, you know. That's a long trial. 
Well, why would the judge uh, make that a condition for the trial to continue? Pre-trial, they said they didn't have the prima facie case to prove that it was organized crime. Okay. So just because the FBI agent picked on these poor two Italian guys who live in Addison, Illinois, you can't bring up organized crime. You can't bring up the outfit. You can't bring up any words that relate to organized crime. Otherwise, it's going to be a mistrial. Really? Even though they were charged with racketeering, extortion, and violence with extortion. And they're Italian. And it was a juice loan. Juice loan. But I would say they're probably right. It was more disorganized crime. <laughs> I guess there's still people out there on the street going, hey, you need to borrow $1,000. I lend it to you, and then you give me $100 each week. Well, that was 2016. I mean, he borrowed the money then. But, you know, I, if they got all their interest back, I don't know why they didn't just write this thing off. It's costing them more with attorney's fees and being in the public eye. And they're probably going to lose anyway and go to prison. Mm. No they way. deny the fact that they made the loan. Jesus. But Gino, Gino, he says he knows the guy, but he didn't tell him to go off and rough him up. They're good friends. Okay. They're good friends, told, though. He never told him to do anything. I don't know about that, but I'm, you know. Oh, he told him this to shit's him. still going on, man. People are still doing that. I don't, I don't understand. I mean, really, like a... There's little payday loan places on every fucking corner, man, especially in the poor neighborhoods. Okay. They do that. It's true. It's a it's a it's a total ploy against because they the who needs loans? Who needs loans? Right? If you live in a fucking million dollar home, you get to go to you get a little, you need a loan, you go to the bank, you get a fucking loan, right? Yes. You don't go to fucking Vinny down the street and go, hey, I need if your credit shot, you can't go to a bank. There you go, and that's going to be your, that's going to be your lower income kind of areas that you're going to find people that are credits fucked up, they screwed up, the young whatever. Okay, it happens. I was there at one point in time too. I did. I was I was in credit card debt. It's, it's, it's a terrible place to be, but I can't imagine the credit card company wanting to break my legs. No. You know what I mean. Mm. So says the charges were dropped. I don't know that, John O. All I know, know, all I know is that it was thrown out Friday on a mistrial. So it's not, I mean, that's yeah, that's it. So, yeah. These days it's easier to make a legitimate living than crime in the long run. It is. It is. You get a job. Go work for the Teamsters. Go set up a fucking convention show. Go do something like, you know, and make make some money. There's plenty of work out there. There's plenty of jobs to be had. Go do something and, and, and be productive. You'll feel better at the end of the day about yourself anyway. You know John, what I mean? John O says prosecutors announced that they were dropping all charges. Really? Yeah, Gino's going to okay. walk. So there you go. That's, that's it. Uh, Gomph. The final leg of the government takeover of rackets has begun in the Illinois House with a bill to legalize and unionize consensual sex workers. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> they used to just be sex workers. Now they're consensual sex workers. Is there a difference? Yeah, the other one's rape. <laughs> what i'm saying man like what isn't it all i thought all the freaking brothels were consensual i thought this you go was in there you pay you do the thing you leave i'm not that i know i've never been to one i'm just saying that's i understand <laughs> friend of mine got a menu from one of them disclaimers, man the disclaimers involved here. <laughs> what's uh, that disclaimers involved here <laughs> <laughs> you know what i thought it was all in las vegas i didn't think it was in Illinois. No nah, man, it's they're 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 trying to. But here's the thing. Here's think about this. Think about this. You got these girls now that are getting on. Uh, they're webcamming. Okay, they're doing what we do, except they take their clothes off, Fred. So if you take your clothes off, you make more money. <laughs> <Not me. laughs> 
no more Giovanni, money. Giovanni say you take your clothes off, you're gonna make them more money. <laughs> um yeah, so these girls they sit there and they dude, you could do that in any state. I don't think there's any kind of they probably maybe, put one state and then the internet picks it up from every state. I don't know, maybe Utah or something you can't. Okay, I don't know. Uh, but, but these girls sit everywhere in the world and they do this. Please, Adam and Red, keep your clothes on. <laughs> and it's not just girls, Red. It's not just girls. It's guys too, man. It's couples. It's everything, dude. You ever, you ever look at any of that and like, because you used to sell all that stuff. No, I've never. You don't see the data what's going on. No. Yeah, if you if you did, you'd be shocked to all hell, man. <laughs> Times have changed. <laughs> yeah, it's not furry down there anymore. Well, that's coming back too. I think I don't know. If that's a thing because the beards are coming back, and I think the whole. <laughs> body hair thing is what the hell are people thinking man honest to god i don't know what, i don't know what you're you're from but the 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 shave thing was very big in the 80s 90s the what? shaved body shaved oh that was the 90s came along man it's when i was you know 80s 90s it was very very big thousand right into that man yeah i i don't believe when i was in the uh, clubs working in the clubs. I don't remember seeing hair. I don't either. No, no, definitely not armpit leg hair. No, 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 no. And, I, and that's like a oh, what the f god, man. Anyway, all right, let's change the subject. So, um, how many made members and associates you guys think are left? I'd say less than 25 total. Man now, Alan B. Who? Made, who's okay. the boss? Who's the boss, Alan? Who made him? Yeah, who's the boss? Where if, if if there's 25 guys working, it takes three guys to make somebody. Where are they putting the money? Because the money's got to be going up to somebody, right? I'm just I, I just think it. Uh, the credit card companies are 22 percent of them. Talk about a juice loan. Uh, yeah, legalize it. It's taxable. Okay, sorry. Um, I got a little behind in the in the things. Keefy D, Scott Mata I have no idea what's going on with Keefy D. I've not read anything, excuse me, or heard anything in the news. The trial of the murder of Tupac Shakur is going to unfold in Las Vegas over yeah. the next several months. Um, that could be a better event than the uh, Mike Tyson fight. Oh, my God. Mike Tyson and Jake Paul are going to duke it out. Mike Tyson. Mike gonna duke it out. What are you talking about, duke it out? Jake's gonna kick the shit. Jake's gonna get his ass handed to him, man. Mike is gonna fuck that boy up, man. Mark my words. And Netflix is gonna make a ton of money off of that. You know what? Here, let's get some of the. We were talking about it. I, I threw some stats up here. Let's look at these stats, okay? Here we go. So, <laughs> age 26, Jake Paul, 54, Mike Tyson. He's damn near. He is twice his age almost. He's he more than twice puny. his age. Look at that guy. He looks puny. I know. Mike looks, I, you know. I, I, he big. looks scared in that picture, okay? He looks scared. Mike <laughs> looks like he's going to kick his ass right now in that picture. Exhibition fights. Tyson's done one. Paul's done two. What's an exhibition fight, Red? That, no money involved. You just do it for the exhibition. That's all. Oh, okay. Okay. So so you're just doing it for fun. Right. Okay, I didn't know what that is. Pro fights. Tyson, 58. Jake Paul, 1. Win. <laughs> Win. His are all amateur fights. 50. <laughs> Wins. Jake Eight Paul, fight. 0. <laughs> Losses. Mike, 6. Jake, 1. No contest. Mike, 2. Jake, 0. Knockouts. Mike, 44. About to have 45. <laughs> Jake Paul, zero. Height. Jake's got some reach. Jake's six foot two. That's why he looks lanky. Mike's only 5'10. And he Mike looks weighs, like he, to me, he looks puny. 15 stone and seven pounds. And Jake is 13 stone and five pounds. You know what a stone is? I think a stone's 12, right? Yeah. Hey, Google, how many pounds is 15 stone and seven pounds? 15 stone is 210 pounds. All right, so 217. Not bad. Good weight. Jake's under 200. All right, reach. 
Tyson, 70 inches. Jake Paul, 76. Stance, orthodox. Orthodox. What is that? I thought that was a religion, orthodox. <laughs> it means orthodox is like uh, natural, uh, what they normally do. So a natural stance. It's got one foot out or something like that. It's a natural stance. Oh, okay, so it's orthodox, whatever that means. It's orthodox. All right, so Mike's going to beat the shit out of that kid, man. I would be getting in the ring with Mike. I mean, you know, if I was a good like any day of the week, any day of the week, I'll, I'll, any day of the week, I'll go, just put the money up and I'll go in the ring with him. You'll get in there? I'll get in there. You'll get in there? Come I'll on. I will. I will. I swear to God, my hand to God, I swear I'll do it. But I can warn you this. As soon as that bell rings, I'm going to lay down. <laughs> you just hit me one time, knock me over, man. Oh, yeah. you are too. Just lay down. That's it. Oh, you just hit me nice and easy. I'll go down and just stay there, man. It's all good. You collect the money. I collect my end. It's all good. <laughs> Alan B. High end prostitution and the video poker machines at the bar are still providing income. I heard. So yeah, I guess it's not much anymore because you're right. The government took it all. High-end prostitution? The internet took that. If they're high-end prostitutes, they don't have pimps. And if they have a pimp, it's a geek sitting there on the computer making everything. You know what I mean? It's, it's, there's, come on. So, David. Here's a guy who's hard up for cash. Who? Gold getter. Right below your comment here. Oh, gold getter. Yeah. I'd let Tyson knock my ass out for 50 grand. No way. And they can give you permanent damage. Talking about Iron Mike, man. So, Solly D is cleaning carpets now. That's what he's in charge of. Do you know how old he is? Yeah, come on. That was when he was doing that shit, it was 25, 30 years ago, right? And he's got a junkie for a kid who's not involved in the family business. I, I'm not, you know what? I, I'm not saying anything bad about anybody, man. Really, honest to God. I said it. I said it. You didn't. I know you did. I'm just saying. I'm not saying. I'm not saying anything bad about anybody. I mean, everybody's got their fucking demons, man. I you know I got my own demons. So, okay. You probably got yours too. I do. Yeah, everybody does. Something. Anyway, false teeth and fly farther. Keith Helton. <laughs> false teeth and fly farther. <laughs> Twang. <laughs> He's 85. Solly D's 85 is what everybody's saying. He's not in the best of health. No, you know, you know, shit. 85. My buddy Jack's turning 89 in a couple of months. Man, when you get up there like that, you know what? Just want to be the like, just do your thing. Jack's sitting there working on his act, you know. Who knows? Yes. I divorced my demon. Good for you, Brady. <laughs> You, I see Brady's posts on Facebook. He looks very happy. He's a very, very happy guy, man. He's got his uh, his kids, and uh, he's, yeah, you got rid of your demon. It's good. He doesn't have a dishwasher either anymore, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> he probably never had one when, when his demon was there. Probably wasn't, yeah. It probably wasn't, man. So, yeah, he got rid of all the broomsticks. Um <laughs> on a broomstick anyway uh yeah so red it's a good time in here if you guys are just coming in hit the like button hit the subscribe button um and we talk about the chicago outfit we talk about various other things too you never know uh we could be talking about aliens you guys uh, are the show yeah you guys are mm -hmm. so red what do you want to talk about next <laughs> We already did the Giovanni bit, so if you guys missed that, you have to go back and watch it. Giovanni will be calling in every week. I think he's fun. So. Hey, let's go. Uh, Bill Davison. Uh, hi, Bill. How you doing, guy? I know. Uh, when I work part-time in Payless Hills, Payless Hills. Oh, yeah. Dolly had family living in town. Yeah, um, we doubt it, man. So Bill's a nice guy. Used to be a cop. Yeah. He's retired. Luminous Grin, I bought my dishwasher a brand new dishwasher. Good for you, Luminous Grin. Um, that's good. My dishwasher doesn't work. <sighs> I had to fix the dryer yesterday. 
I had to put a new belt and four pulleys and a tension pulley in it. Oh, that was so much fun. You know, when you get done with a job like that and you go, fuck, I still have a screw left. Where was that supposed to go? And then three months later, you hear a weird rattle and you're like, man, maybe that's where that screw was supposed to go. <laughs> it happens. Man. You get done with a job and you don't have like a extra part or some shit left over. I yeah. asked him what he did with the screw and he said he put it in the box with all the other ones. He, he collects these screws. Believe it or not. Uh, the it still works. I turned it on, and, and the dryer works. Believe it or not. not I believe it. Okay, Scott H., did you ever meet Art Bell? No, I never met Art. I used to listen to him, Coast to Coast AM. He was fantastic. Art Bell was great. So, yeah, I liked him. Uh, Glenn Larry Anderson, K-Ghost Radio. Go check out Glenn. His show, he's got, um, he's got great, uh, uh, great information on his show, so. Mob tours, yeah. If you guys come to Vegas, do the Vegas mob tour. Uh, Philip Wright, did Jake Paul steal Tyson's tiger? Remember the movie Hangover? Ed? Yes. Yeah, okay. All right. So, um, Sonny Zaro, to the newbies here, we always go off topic. It's a tradition. Yes, it is a tradition. No, it has been since the show started. It's where, where the hell do we end up? Who? Ever since, I've been on, ever since I've been on, it's, it's a tradition. We start out, Adam spends 11, 12 hours working on a thumbnail about a subject. And we barely even touch on that subject. What happens? Because we'll be talking on what you want to talk about. Ever put it together. Yeah, we end up somewhere totally different. That's how it goes. That's all good, though, you know. All right. Um, so with that said... Uh, Jelly Belly Pritzker is the boss, and all the other politicians are the soldiers. That's what it is. It's what it is, man. I'll buy that. I'll what buy it is. Yes, that's your that's your your fucking that's your new boss. You know what I couldn't believe is uh, Burke's. I forget her name, but uh, uh, she's a Burke, and I think she's the daughter of the Alderman Burke. But she won the state's attorney's bid for the Democratic ticket. And she, that means she's going to be the new state's attorney. So whoever the idiot is that uh, – did I say that? Yeah, I did. Yeah, you did. Um, <laughs> that uh, prosecuted uh, Jesse Smollett is going to oh, be – Oh, no, no, Juicy Smollett. Yeah, they're going to he's, – she is Juicy Smollett. She's going to be losing her job. Oh, yeah? Well, yeah, she was the state's attorney. Oh, She's in deep shit. Hey, Cindy. She's home. She's finally home. She's here. I haven't seen Cindy on our live in months. I, I, mean, you I hope you and her for doing well. Hi, Cindy. God bless you, dear. It's Red's birthday today, Cindy, in case you missed it. Uh, happy birthday, Red. Everybody needs to know about it. The Pritzkers, <laughs> the Pritzkers were on Epstein's Island. You know who else was? David Copperfield. <laughs> No shit, man. That's what I read. I read. And, you know, so funny because David Copperfield was supposed to make the moon disappear a couple months ago. It was supposed to make the moon disappear. And then this Epstein thing came out, and now he disappeared. So you don't hear anything <laughs> about this moon disappearing. Red, you finally have a drinking age. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then in a couple of years, too. Oh, Second City Firearms. David Blaine, too. Really? David Blaine. Not me. No, sir. I didn't go to Epstein's Island. No, no, no. No, no, no. All right, Joe. Juan Achoa. Dolphin. Did I tell you about the mayor in Dolphin? Hold on. What are your guys' thoughts on what's going on in Dalton? No, I think you did. Somebody sent me something. The mayor of Dalton was uh, arrested for... Uh, for Yesterday, for she closed City Hall. Yesterday, she closed City Hall and said, no people are allowed to watch our city council meetings. Really? And it, they own it. The people paid for that. Taxes paid for the property. Yeah. Right? yeah. City council members walked out. About five or six of them just got up and left and said, if the public can't watch us, I'm leaving. Wow. But the, the mayor, you know, mm. and they thought Daly was rough. <laughs> Didn't didn't the didn't the mayor didn't she get arrested for like vandalism or breaking into houses or some shit? A few no, years somebody else. It's somebody else. It, it's, she hasn't been arrested yet, 
But if they do arrest her, it's going to be a big one. The FBI is investigating her. You know how long the FBI investigates? Forever. But do when they, they, they got gotcha. you. Yeah. Jeez. It's so corrupt, man. Crook County. So corrupt. That whole freaking place, man. Crook County, Illinois. It's the most corrupt county in the whole freaking state. It's a, the whole state and the whole country. I believe it. It's got to be. It's got to be. Everything, man. It's all about this. You know what I mean? You dealt out whatever you need to. to. <laughs> How many people miss Cook County when they leave? It's a fresh, a fresh air when you leave. Yeah, you get the hell out of there. Yeah. Oh, she was. You know what? You know what property taxes were there, and sh- it's unbelievable, man. You retire and you still end up paying the government fifteen thousand a year in property taxes. You know, it's crazy. Just bullshit, man. She was stealing cars in Roseland a few years before she came mayor. Yeah, Juan Ochoa. So he's familiar with this whole thing. She was stealing cars and then became the mayor. I don't know. How the hell did that happen? Doesn't the opposing person who is running against her go, hey, Grand Theft Auto? (laughs) You know what I mean? And people go, oh, shit, you know. Cars. She might be fucking crooked when she gets in office and steal our money. You ever think of that? They didn't do that. With, they never vetted Obama. Come on. All right. So Kane County property taxes are terrible, too. Uh, did you see the Drew Peterson special? They showed a skeleton in the river. What? No. What is that about? Who's Drew Peterson? Uh, that is the murder. I don't know. I'm I'm gonna have to. Drew Peterson. Uh, Drew Peterson. Murder. No. What did he say? Skeleton. Skeleton. Let's just Google those words. Stacy Pearson believes. Stacy Pearson's sister believes she found her remains eight hours ago. Stacy Pearson. Uh, Drew Pearson's fourth wife went missing in 07. Drew Pearson was a suspect in her disappearance. Usually is the, that's usually the case, right? It's usually the a domestic thing. He's currently trying to overturn his conviction in third wife's murder. <laughs> third wife murder. Did he get away with one and two and then got to three? They couldn't prove it. All right. At the time of her disappearance, Stacy Peterson was 23 years old. 23 years old. She had married to her former Bolingbrook police sergeant, Drew Peterson, 49 at the time. Damn, he was 50, got himself a 23 year old, less than half his age. Yep. He's a cop. A cop. He was. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, I can see Elon Musk, and I can see Al Pacino, you know. All right, Bolingbrook police sergeant. Lucky guy. Give it to him. Stacy Peterson has never been found. While Drew Peterson was found guilty of killing his third estranged wife. He killed his third wife. This is a police officer. Kathleen Savio in 2012. That was all going on uh, when I was doing a case when it, when it first started. He's 70. He was sentenced in 2013 to 38 years in prison. Anyway, they found, she she shared an underwater video, what she says is her sister's skeletal remains with Crime Nation, a television show on the CW. Um, dude, I didn't hear anything about this, man. Thanks for bringing it up. I'm going to look at it. sounds like a Braldo scam. Right? Doesn't it? It kind of does. They didn't say it was their her remains. They said she believes that they were. He killed a couple of his wives. Yeah, yeah the former copper, his wives kept yeah. disappearing. Yeah, it's crazy. What a freaking crazy story. Unreal. So, Keith, Keith, you're wrong. It's not the black widow, it's the white widow. White widower? Why? <laughs> <laughs> it's a black widow, man. It's a spider. There's no white widow. Look at this guy. <sighs> Albino spider? Could be. Yeah. I should program. Have. It was on the CW last night. I missed it. Gary missed it. I mean, Gary. Red missed it. Gary, I was looking at his name. Gary Mushinsky. Also got 40 years for trying to arrange a hit on the prosecutor. I love it. So the cop tried to arrange a hit on the prosecutor. 
This dude thinks it's 1970 something, man, and you can get away with this shit. Seriously, who does that in today? Who does that today? I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna text somebody. Hey, can you kill my fucking prosecutor? Well, how do you get away with something like that? You don't. This is the epitome of stupid. It is. Crime is stupid. You know, the first time I read the word epitome, I read epitome. <laughs> what it looked like to me epitome that's the butcher though all right so this guy's a total sociopath no shit you know what movie i just watched there the other day i watched the richard kuklinski movie oh yeah the ice man the guy oh, they, they did the movie that, a year or two ago that guy was chill man no man like the movie he it's thought to be real like i like the movie you get me wrong it was interesting but he went around that, spraying the mist you know <laughs> Then after we watched the movie, then we had to go to like Kuklinski and the psychologist, you know, an hour and a half interview with a real dude sitting there. I think that guy's full of shit, man. Oh, so yeah. I think he's playing with them, man. I think he talks a bigger game. He's dead. Like he's dead. Gonna... Look at him. Yeah, yeah. They... No, 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 no. Somebody killed him in, in prison, didn't they? I think he died of a heart attack or something like that. He, he died in prison. Hold on. Uh, hey, Google, how did Richard Kuklinski die? I don't understand. Kuk there it is. Uh, he was known as the Iceman, the murderer, according to Wikipedia. Wikipedia, so I don't know how accurate all this is. Death. 18 years, he was diagnosed with Kawasaki disease. What's that, some kind of motorcycle disease? Kawasaki disease. How did what's Kawasaki disease? That sounds like some shit out of Wuhan. What, what <laughs> after nearly 18 years in prison, Kuklinski was diagnosed with Kawasaki disease. He was transferred to a secure wing at St. Francis Medical Center in Trenton, New Jersey. Uh, although he asked doctors to make sure they revived him if he developed uh, cardiopulmonary arrest. His former wife, Barbara, said he had signed a do not resuscitate order. I'll leave it to a woman to help. <laughs> a week before his death, the hospital called Barbara to ask if she wished to rescind the instruction, but she declined. <laughs> you imagine that? She's like, you know, do we want to rescind the do not resuscitate? Fuck it. If he dies, let him go. He's been in there uh, 18 years. I need the insurance. Kuklinski died at age 70 on March 5th, 06. Oh, it was a few days after I moved to Vegas, this guy died. Uh, at the request of Kuklinski's family, forensic pathologist Michael Baden reviewed the autopsy report. Baden confirmed that Kuklinski died of cardiac arrest and had been suffering with heart disease and fl phlebitis. It's an inflammation of the vein in the legs, usually. That's like uh, Nixon had that, phlebitis. Mu Muca Spontaneous lymph node syndrome. It's a syndrome of unknown cause that results in fever and mainly affects children under five. It is a form of vasculitis where medium-sized blood vessels become inflamed throughout the body. The fever typically lasts more than five days and is not affected by any usual medications. <laughs> oh, my God. This is Kawasaki disease. This is terrible, man. Why would they name that Kawasaki disease? Sir, sir, sir. Huh? See what the crowd says here? No, I didn't. I'm sorry. No, I didn't. It's a symptom. Kawasaki <laughs> disease has the symptom of mispronounced words. <laughs> Richard's ex-wife was devastated by his actions. Oh. I heard, man. Yeah. A <laughs> motorcycle death. Kawasaki. I don't know, guys. I just make this shit up as we go. In fact, multiple podcasters have proven 90% of the Iceman stories were fraudulent. That's a fact. See, like the story of him sitting there and telling the guy, I'll give you a half an hour to pray to God. We'll see if God will come down here and save you. Nobody was there for that. half an hour with the guy. Nobody was there for that one. They don't know. That's what I'm saying, man. It sounds like some made up shit, some of this. Like, I I, I can't imagine if you're going to kill somebody, you just kill somebody. You know what I mean? You just go do it, I guess. You just sit there and fucking drag something out, torturing somebody. It's uh, Milwaukee Phil or somebody like that, you know? It sounds like some shit Mad Sam would do, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Didn't Gianni Russo kill him? I, th I heard that. 
Gianni did that. Holy cripes. So, Red uh, wants to go talk on his channel uh, some more about, about the same thing we've been talking about. So, um, we're going to go over there and talk for a little bit on Red's channel. You guys come out to Vegas. Be sure to do the Vegas Mop Tour. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we take you around, show you the places. Go read the reviews. They're all good. I put them all up there myself. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's not true. That's not true. My mom does. <laughs> no whack a mole. <laughs> whack a mole. Um, whack anyway, guys, have a great day. Red, thanks for coming out and uh, being a, a sport and uh, participating on the show today. Um, it's always fun to have you around. Um, and uh, I'm sure, everybody enjoyed it. Happy birthday, by the way, one more time. Happy birthday. If you guys didn't know, it's Red's birthday. Happy Sunshine. birthday, Red. Made it. <laughs> anyway, you guys have a great day. See you later, Red. Happy birthday. Enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you over on um, we'll see you over on Red's channel. And uh um the the link is in the description. So click on the link. We'll see you there. We'll see you there. Join us for the Vegas mob tour. Experience Sin City's dark past. Learn how Bugsy Siegel built the Flamingo. Find out who killed him and why. Hear who Jimmy Hoffa supplied money to back in the 50s. Visit the actual home used in the 1995 blockbuster movie Casino and other filming locations as well. See the real jewelry store where Frank Collada and his crew were busted. Sit in the exact spot where Frank Lefty Rosenthal's car was bombed back in 82. View never-before-seen footage of Frank Collada telling personal stories about Tony Spilatro, Joey the Clown Lombardo, and the Hole in the Wall gang. This is how serious we thought he's on. It's almost like a peach color. It was brown then. The only thing changed is the driveway. Here's an offer you can't refuse. Upgrade to the Untouchables experience. Following the tour, you'll enjoy a three-course dinner at the Tuscany Gardens, and then VIP seating for the long-running hit the Rat Pack is back show. Experience Vegas. The way it was meant to be.